Hello, my name is Caroline, and this video is all about the global pandemic and life hacks we've seen out of it. Essentially, it is a Raspberry Pi Zero W with a unicorn hat, and this is a little optional diffuser I've made for it that I 3D printed, and it indicates your Microsoft Teams status. If you are on Microsoft Teams and you set your status green for available, yellow for I'm sort of busy, red for do not disturb, and you wanna have this available somewhere else in your office or your home so that your family members, if you're working from home, will know, hey, here's my Microsoft Teams status. I'm showing you my desktop now, and in the top right-hand corner, I can go ahead and change my status from available to red to busy, and this service pulls my Microsoft Teams status once a minute and there it goes. My status is now red. It took about a little bit less than a minute to do that. And now let me change my status to yellow. Be right back. And there it goes. The status is now yellow, corresponding to your Microsoft Teams status. Now let's get started. I want to caveat this project that this is a soldering project. I do not recommend this for children or anybody that doesn't have previous soldering experience. I would not do this project as a very first soldering project. The pins are very close together and soldering is very, very hot. Take whatever disclaimers you need from this video and please be very, very careful with your soldering iron. Let me go into the materials that you'll need for this project. I used a Raspberry Pi Zero W and I did solder on all of the pins and I'll show you a quick little video about that. I have a unicorn pea hat from Pi Moroni. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this correctly. And this was a soldering project. I'll show you how I soldered that together. Then you'll need your micro SD card formatted for the Raspbian operating system. I'm actually gonna use Raspbian Lite in this tutorial because you just need to run a few scripts on it. I only recommend doing it this way if you are familiar with terminal commands, otherwise just go with the regular operating system. And then last but not least, this piece is of course completely optional. This is a diffuser hat that I put on top of the unicorn hat and I've 3D printed this. You can also buy a diffuser hat, completely optional and it's just for aesthetic purposes. And I had two M2.5 screws and four accompanying of these uh, nuts uh, as well. And I'll show you how to assemble all of that right now. And here's our unicorn hat and it does open very easily, just like that. Take it out and there are just two pieces for the unicorn P hat. We have to line up all the pins and then we want to solder it in place like this. How do we do that? Let's get out a piece of tape and I'll just tape this in place. Simple as that. And then we are not going to solder through these wires. We're just going to solder on the edges and then we will take off the tape and then solder the rest of it together. Then we remove the tape. And there we go. I've soldered on all 40 pins and we are done with the soldering part of the unicorn pea hat. We are done soldering on pins for our Raspberry Pi. Try not to bend the pins. There we go, now we've got a Raspberry Pi Zero W with headers. Now that I have finished all the soldering I need to do for this project, let me show you a quick hardware assembly. Now I've got the unicorn hat and it is soldered in place. I'm gonna match up all 40 pins on my Raspberry Pi Zero W. Now I've got my Raspbian Lite on my micro SD card all set up per that previous video. Insert my micro SD card. This would work perfectly and you could just power this up. Now I've gone the extra step and I have added a little diffuser 
on here. You could buy a diffuser or for me, I just uh, 3D printed one and I have left the link to the SDL file. It's on add-on Thingiverse. I've left a link to it in the description field. And uh, basically this is clear PETG filament. You could use clear PLA filament, I'm sure, as well. I've got two 2.5 millimeter screws. I have two nuts and two screws and i'm going to line that up with the unicorn hat and it creates a nice little diffuser for this project i hope you'll like that and then i've got my micro sd card and i'll pop it together and we are going to ssh into our raspberry pi with raspbian light and all i need to do is power up my pie now. I'm showing you the tutorial that I used to build this project. This is from an Ilio Struff and he created this tutorial. I'm going to scroll through and just kind of show you uh, what you need to do in this tutorial. Now, first of all, I've already showed you the hardware and how I have assembled the hardware. I'm gonna assume that you've done that to get to this point in the tutorial. Here's the hardware. Now he used a Raspberry Pi Zero a unicorn P hat. I'm also using one as well. P hat diffuser. Now he purchased one and then he decided he didn't want to solder all of the pins like I did. Our projects differ very, very slightly at this point. He also goes over, you need a Pi Zero W, eight gigabyte micro SD card, and of course the power cable. Here's where you can do this your way, essentially. I, I've kind of done it slightly differently, but about 90% the way he did it. And the results are exactly the same. The software, he is using Diet Pi. I chose not to use Diet Pi just because I'm just not familiar with Diet Pi. That is it. I decided that the Raspbian Lite would get me to about the same place in terms of performance from a Raspberry Pi Zero W for this project. So I'm not using Diet Pi, I'm using a Raspbian light operating system. And I have in a previous video, which I will link to below, I go through the whole setup process for a Raspberry Pi Zero W with the Raspbian light operating system, how you get that on a micro SD card, how you SSH into it. And now I've got my desktop open. I'm gonna SSH into my Raspberry Pi where I'm gonna get my terminal commands from. I'm gonna to go to github.com. I'm gonna to go to my GitHub page. I'm gonna go over to repositories and unicorn busy server. Now I did fork this from somebody else's GitHub status light indicator. And here's my page and I've added this little GIF here so you can see the different colors that are available. And now I'm going to make sure that I have my terminal open. If you're on a Windows machine, you will use PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y instead. And I'm gonna SSH Pi and I am in. And if I hit LS, there's nothing here. In a nutshell, what I'm doing is I'm on my Mac desktop. I have SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi because I know the internal IP address for it and my password. And we're gonna do a sudo apt get update. And the commands that I'm following are right on my GitHub page. We did a sudo app get update. Now we're gonna do a sudo app get install Python pip. Yes, I want to continue. I'll hit the Y key, hit enter. And last but not least, I will do a sudo apt get install git. This allows us to be able to git clone in the next step. So I'll hit the Y key and hit enter. Excellent. Those are the three commands if you are using Raspbian Lite, now known as Raspberry Pi OS Lite, and we need to do that as a prerequisite before we can proceed. And I'm just gonna go straight into git clone, right click copy, right click paste, and I'm gonna git clone my repository. Excellent, I have completed the git clone. I can hit ls to see that I have created that directory. I've copied everything over. I am going to CD into that new directory that I have, right click copy, right click paste, enter. Let's look and see what I have in my little directory. All right, excellent, I have all of the files I need. Now I'm going to shamod my install.sh because I will have to run an install and uh, I'm just making this an executable and that's all I'm doing with the shamod. And now that I've made install an executable, copy, paste, now I'm just gonna run install.sh and I'm going to install everything I need. 
Do I want to continue? Yes, I do. Perfect, we have done the install. If I hit LS now, you'll see I've got more files and I've got some executables. Now let's see if this works. sudo python server.py. Let's see if we can run that file. From here, you can test this out by going to your internal IP address and typing API on. And that is one of the API calls that you can make and it, it just gives you a random color is all it does. And I'm gonna stop this function, control C. So now it's no longer running this commands. And let's scroll down to how do I make this work on boot? I need to copy the busy light service, copy, right click, paste, and then let me start my busy light service. Copy, paste, enter. All right, now I wanna check the status. Let's see if it actually did start. It looks like it actually started, excellent. Back to my project here, and for it to start on boot, I just need to enable it. Now I'm going to enable it, paste. Now if you wanna make changes, or if you just don't want it to run automatically boot anymore, then you would disable your busy light service. You could stop your busy light service. You wanna make a change, restart. And so all, all that good stuff works. So I've enabled busy light service to start automatically. Now I'm doing a pseudo reboot. From there, we go into home bridge. Essentially, there needs to be a bridge between your Raspberry Pi and your Microsoft Teams, and Homebridge does exactly that. What he shows you is that you can install Homebridge on a Raspberry Pi. Technically, yes, you can install it on your uh, Raspberry Pi that you're going to use for this project. So he has, you know, hey, they can run together on the same Pi. I did try that out before I started this video. I don't recommend it uh, for two reasons. One, it was too heavy to run on a Raspberry Pi 0W and run the light server as well to change the colors of the lights. Um, so you would have to upgrade to a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Raspberry Pi 4 in order to run Homebridge and the light server on one device. The other reason I don't recommend running Homebridge on your Raspberry Pi is because every single time you reboot your Pi, you'll have to go through the process of authenticating on Microsoft's website. And I think this is a security issue where they want to make sure you are who you say you are because you are coming from Microsoft Teams. You are technically logging in to Microsoft Teams versus a development issue. My solution is to run Microsoft Teams on my desktop computer, my regular computer, and also Homebridge on my desktop computer as well. And that way Homebridge can run in the background and if I do need to reboot my computer, I can easily, because there's a screen, I can easily uh, log back in to my Teams account. I'm not gonna go into installing Homebridge on a Raspbian. What I'm gonna do is go into installing Homebridge on my laptop computer. Open link in a new tab, and it's gonna take me into Homebridge. And HomeKit is support for the impatient. Homebridge is a lightweight Node.js server that emulates iOS HomeKit API. And it says view on GitHub, all right, let's do that. And from here, scroll down. It kind of tells you what Homebridge is about, and it's really not about Microsoft Teams, and it's really not about this project, but this is uh, what the developer decided to use. And now your next step is to set up Homebridge running in the background, eventually, on your computer. I'm gonna use my laptop computer, and I'm going to go for set up Homebridge on Mac OS and then it goes through all of the steps that you need. You need to make sure you've got Node.js on your computer. You can do nodejs.org download here. Then you wanna go about installing it on your laptop computer, your desktop computer. You will need Node.js, and then you wanna test if you have the right version. And maybe I'll go ahead and do that while I'm here. So node-v, I'm running 12.16.2, and let's see if it's working, np. 6.14.4 and then you want to do a sudo npm install so i've already done this and an hb service install so i've already done all of this on my computer after you finish the install through these command lines and essentially if you need to do that you would copy and then paste into your terminal once you have your home bridge up and running, you'll go to localhost8581. You will log in. The default login and password is admin 
admin and this is running on your home network unless somebody else is on your network really this should be fairly secure of course you can change the password if you want to feel more secure which i highly recommend of course because it's local host it's only accessible within your home network from here you want to install a homebridge plugin and that homebridge plugin you want to install is called ms graph and you want to search for Homebridge Presence Switch MS Graph. And I am going to go into Homebridge Plugins. I'm going to search for the plugin, paste MS Graph. Here is the plugin that you'll need. You'll hit install. Excellent. It's going to add an accessory to you. And then you'll need to fill in all of this information. I'm just going to uh, hit cancel for right now. Got the switch present. And now I'm just going to go into here. You can add this as an accessory. So here's all the code that you need. And it might already be over here. So let's go back to the home bridge. Let's go into config and hit enter. And then I'm going to paste everything I just saw from here into accessories right here. And what you need to do is you need to know the IP address, your internal IP address of your Raspberry Pi 0W, where your busy light service is running right now. For me, I know what that is. And I just wanna go through and change that color API everywhere where I see 000. I'm now going to change that to my internal IP address and I'm gonna hit save. From here, I wanna do a restart. And I can go over here to status and I'm gonna wait until Homebridge, right now it's not running because it's restarting. I'm gonna go back to Homebridge and hopefully it will restart. There it is, it is now running. All right, now that we have that up and running, now we wanna go into accessories and we wanna turn our presence indicator on. The default is presence indicator off. Now, every time you reboot your computer, you will be back in this state. You will have your configuration, you will have your plugins if you reboot your computer, but this will automatically toggle to off. I believe this is for security purposes. So you wanna click presence indicator on, and then you wanna run over back to status. And what you'll see is that you'll see to sign in, you want to go to the website, Microsoft device login and enter this code. So I'm gonna copy this code and I'm gonna click on this link. It should take me right into Microsoft and I'm going to paste, enter. And now I'm gonna to need to know my Microsoft Teams login and password and be able to authenticate. And here is my Microsoft ID. And for the very first time when you log in, this is not my first time, you will have to approve of some permissions. So I've already said, yes, I would like to be part of Lux4 Presence. What is Lux4 Presence? It's something written by the original developer. And he is allowing a multi-tenant, he's al allowing us to use his presence, essentially, to use the service. So thank you very much. Otherwise, you'd have to write your own Azure uh, service to do this. I'm just gonna use his, it's pretty easy. And now it says access token acquired. All right, perfect. And that is the bridge, the home bridge between Microsoft Teams and your Raspberry Pi presence indicator. Now, if I go into Microsoft Teams, I am green. I'm gonna set it to busy, to red. In about a minute, it should change. And there it is. It changed to red. I am now busy according to Microsoft Teams and I have Homebridge. So Homebridge, even if you close this tab, that's perfectly fine. It will just continue to run in the background. If your computer goes to sleep, perfectly fine. I did this several days ago on Mac OS and everything is fine. The only difference is if you reboot your computer, do you need to log in to Microsoft again using that process I just showed you where you want to turn your presence indicator from off to on because it will automatically turn off every time you reboot your computer. But on your desktop computer, that's pretty easy to do. On a Raspberry Pi, if you wanted to do that, you would have to have a GUI interface and do that. My recommendation is to use Raspbian Lite have your light service working on your Raspberry Pi, and then have Homebridge and Teams on your desktop computer and be able to control it there. And this has been Building a Busy Light to Show Your Microsoft Teams Presence by Elio Struff. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye now.